In this video, we will see how to understand multidimensional linear regression. Let's start with the basic one-dimensional case, which we are going to be studying in a sort of linear algebra kind of way. And this will allow us to generalize quite nicely to the multidimensional linear case. We have real valued labels y equals to y1 until yn and uh, real valued features x equals to x1 until xn. Let's assume for simplicity here that bar x is equal to bar y is equal to zero. So we don't need to add a constant factor in our linear regression. Then linear regression boils down to determining the slope beta that minimizes the sum of squares s equals to the sum of the beta xi. This is the prediction given by the linear approximation minus yi, which is the actual label. Uh, and we're going to square that to take uh, the sum of squares. And we are going to want to minimize that with respect to beta. Now, what's going to be very useful, at least to get a geometrical intuition of it, of it all, is to interpret this problem as a distance minimization in Rn. Indeed, after all, what we're trying to do is to approximate the vector y with the vector beta x. And in fact, the sum of squares is exactly the square of the distance between the n-dimensional vector y and the n-dimensional vector beta x. But this is a well-known problem in Euclidean geometry. The solution is the vector beta x, that is the projection, the orthogonal projection of y on the one-dimensional vector space spanned by the vector x. This tells us that the result beta x of the orthogonal projection is going to be the projection on x of y, which is equal to x transpose x divided by x transpose x times x, where the denominator here, x transpose x, can be understood as the size of the vector x squares so that you can see that on the numerator here, we have the x transpose and the x. So we have sort of two times the size of x that gets multiplied. We need to cancel it to get something of the order of y, and that does not really depend on x. So that's why we need to divide by x transpose x. And you see that the x transpose y is a way of projecting the vector y onto the one-dimensional vector space that's generated only by f, that's the x on the right. In any case, we obtain uh, finally the value for beta. Beta is going to be, well, x transpose y divided by x transpose x, which we can rewrite x transpose x, which we take the inverse of, times x transpose y. Now let's move on to the multidimensional case. Now we want to explain each real valued label yi by a p-dimensional vector xi which is going to be equal to xi1, xi2, xi until xip. In other words, we want to approximate yi as a linear combination of the xi something, xij's, um, that is xi1 times some coefficient beta1 plus xi2 times beta2 and so on until xip beta p. This can be rewritten as the vector xi, the vector beta. Well, here beta is now a p-dimensional vector of slopes. The sum of squares is now s equals to the sum of xi beta is what's predicted by our linear approximation minus yi, which is the actual label of data datum i. And we're going to square the difference between the prediction and what and the actual label. In other words, we want to approximate some vector y equals to y1 until yn with a linear combination of vectors x beta. And x beta is x something 1 times beta 1 plus x something 2 times beta 2 and so on until x something p beta p. This is the linear approximation that we'll get of the vector y of rn. So we want to approach the n-dimensional vector y of labels with a linear combination of the columns of the matrix x. And this means that once again we want to minimize the square of the distance 
of the Euclidean distance between a vector y and a point that must belong to some vector subspace, the vector subspace that is spanned by the columns of the matrix X. So once again, Euclidean geometry kicks in to provide us the answer. We need to set X beta to be the value of the projection of the vector Y onto the vector subspace spanned by the columns of the matrix X. This gives us the value beta equals to the projection onto x of y and, well, Euclidean geometry tells us that this is equal to x transpose x, which I take the inverse of, times x transpose y. In other words, we get exactly the same equation as we did in the one-dimensional case, except that now x transpose x is actually a matrix, and so x transpose x minus 1 is going to be the inverse of a p by p matrix. Uh, finally, let me just quickly address uh, the one assumption that we made early on, the fact that we, need to, we needed to assume that bar y was equal to bar x is equal to 0. To uh, circumvent this issue, it's very simple. But basically, we're going to just add one new feature. We're now going to consider p plus 1 dimensional uh, features that are going to include, in addition, an input which is just going to be the same input for all the vector x's, which is just going to be equal to 1. And the slope that's associated with this last uh, entry of uh, the feature vectors is just going to give us the constant term in the linear regression.